Hey guys, what's up? So welcome to this brand new course on condition of women in modern India and their role in freedom struggle. Like every year, trust me, like in prelims or mains, this question is asked. Obviously, you are going to become a civil servant. And traditionally, India has been a patriarchal society, so there are a lot of discrimination which is going on against the women in general. And what was their role? What was their conditions in modern India? It was the worst possible conditions of women in last two, three thousand years. and uh, but they did play a very important role in freedom struggle it is said that in ancient india their conditions was much better sabha samiti they were a the part of but uh, in modern india it was like truly truly abysmal so let's see what kind of discrimination were there sati pratha not allowing good or marriage all these changed during the modern india and their role in freedom struggle like tremendous tremendous role they played in freedom struggle but unfortunately just like uh, you will not see their name in nobel prize list you will not see their names in freedom struggle fighters list as much so let us find them out so in the words of the former un secretary general kofi annan there is no tool for development more effective than the empowerment of women like it's such a big statement but sadly this tool remains unutilized in most part of the world more so in india because uh, since ancient times not only in india but even in the western world women had been considered nothing without a man uh, they exist under his domination they followed his rules prohibited in decision making roles so that is pretty clear that this is the status of the women uh, in the entire world not just in india in the entire world now there is a huge prevalence of patriarchy what does what do you mean by patriarchy a social system in which men are considered superior to the women and in which men have more control over resources Uh, they are the decision maker and the ideology is the male male culprit okay this is the main culprit the patriarchy in patriarchy violence against women is considered part of the system and according to un one out of every 3 billion women experiences violence so if the world population is considered to be 7.5 billion then roughly 4 billion women are there roughly out of them like 1.3 billion women more than a billion women and girls experience violence and this is literally the biggest war going on in the world now let us talk about social and political discriminations so women in india they belong to different classes caste religion communities etc but it can be safe to say that most women will experience gender inequality and subordination no matter how high they are or how low they are they lag behind men in all the indicators of social and human development uh, except uh, the life expectancy part like overall average it is high but uh, health nutrition wise educational levels they are low but in life expectancy usually on an average women are better than men okay now women are concentrated in unskilled semi skilled and low paid jobs uh, they get lower wages than men and they hardly own or control any property all these points are 100% facts and they do not control means of production as well and the number of female headed households yani ki ek to the purush pradhan स्त्री प्रधान तो जो फीमेल हेडेड हाउस होल्ड हैं दे हैव बीन इंक्रीजिंग एंड बट दे आर अमंग्स द पोअरेस्ट इन आर कंट्रीज सो दैट इज नॉट सच अ गुड एग्जांपल टू एमिलेट फॉर द पीपल एंड द पार्टिसिपेशन ऑफ वुमेन इन पॉलिटिकल एंड सोशल डिसीजन मेकिंग इज वेरी लो एंड इट हैज नेवर बीन हायर दैन टेन परसेंट इन आर पार्लियामेंट सो यू कैन इमेजिन वॉट गोज ऑन इन द एंटायर कंट्री दे आर फॉर दे हैव वेरी लिटिल से इन द फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ सोशल इकोनॉमिक लीगल पॉलिटिकल रूल्स विच गवर्न देयर लाइफ now health is another area where the women suffers most women have neither the time nor the mindset or facilities to go in for health care and people don't spend money on them as well rural women especially they have no access to even such a basic health care facility as a toilet in their homes so that is the sad reality of the india even in 2017 don't think we are talking about modern india we are talking about modern india yes but it, 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 but even today this is the reality now there is huge social stigma related to single women whether they are widows whether they are unmarried whether they are divorcee and they have been it has been one of the factors for the lowly status of women in india a single woman is always regarded as an object of ridicule or a social outcast basically people don't want to mingle with them uh, now let us talk about the burdens and fears of women so in large parts of the india girls live with disadvantages burdens and fears no doubt about it Uh, they carry the burdens of neglect discrimination household work they have to look after their siblings and of the work outside the homes uh, girls in india continuously live with fears basically 
they can be aborted fears of being poisoned fear of being neglected allowed to die not giving enough health care honor killing what not fear of not getting adequate affection care nourishment medical attention and even if they survive let's say for till class 12th then education becomes a very big factor now let us not shy away from dealing with harsh issues and if these fears are not enough obviously there is fear of sexual abuse sexual harassment at workplace sexual harassment by relatives sexual harassment by teachers and they ranging from playful man handling to rape always haunts them and there are lots and lots of such cases thousands and thousands of such cases in india in even after the passing of stricter laws better laws the number of brutal gang rapes has been rising and nothing can highlight it better than the unfortunate case of nirbhaya god rest her soul uh, after marriage they face the fear of loneliness maladjustment mental torture physical torture domestic violence marital rape the list is endless now uh, there is a change in the air practices which are thousands of years old will not change overnight that is for sure in india almost a century long struggle happened for empowerment of women and brought women the property rights voting rights equality in civil rights before the law in matters of marriage and employment after independence of india constitution makers national leaders recognized the equal social position of women with men and made constitutional provisions for equality several measures were also taken by the government to assign equal status of women in the economic political and social fields like equal pay for equal work etc uh, passage of several acts by the parliaments have done by then and lot of schemes have been introduced by both center and state to give parity to them and have done much for women's emancipation both legally politically socially etc and due to work done by lot of pressure groups women's movement and actions by government civil society organization one can see some positive changes for women for example there is growing gender awareness as a result of which women's subordination is recognized and the need to challenge it is accepted by all so violence against women is recognized and condemned women's participation in all the decision making bodies is seen as important there have been improvements in educational and job opportunities for women policy statements have become more gender sensitive uh, there is some increase in the number of women participating in government and non government developmental agencies and programs women participation in pri has increased thanks to the reservation and our government has set up women's bureaus commissions departments ministries to look into the gender issues so when it comes to like basic women empowerment uh, people who control resources and ideology become the decision maker and women empowerment would require changing the patriarchal mindset and it need to includes women struggle and movements uh, so basically we need to give it is response like through democratization and decentralization of society this can happen and there are a lot of issues which need special attention so gender gap between ownership and control of the property is a very big factor lack of access to gainful employment and even if they gain the employment they need to be given equal pay then sharing of household and child rearing work with the male counterpart control over women's sexuality and finally the most important patriarchal ideology needs a very big attention so let us discuss the conditions so this was just an introduction of what kind of issues we are going to tackle hey guys what's up so let us discuss the condition of women in modern india and their role in freedom struggle this is the lesson 2 of this course the whole point of this course is to make you more gender sensitized because you are future bureaucrats or future civil servants and you should know that the women are constantly being discriminated against for last uh, not 10000 years but at least last 2 to 3000 years whenever the civilization came into proper structure and the condition has worsened uh, it has become really really bad and especially the rural india it is really really bad and urban india it is gradually improving but there is still a lot 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 to be done okay and uh, let's see what was their struggle in during the freedom struggle and how did they participate so first of all you have to start that women's participation in the struggle started in as a, early as 1817 when bhima bai holkar fought against the british colonel malcolm and defeated him in gorilla warfare so you can use her name uh, chinamma who was the widowed queen of uh, raja mal sarja fought against the mighty british army and she also got initial success against them in her kingdom kittor which is in the belgaon district of karnataka now if you are talking about women uh, freedom fighter in india and uh, if you do not take the name of rani of jhansi that is lakshmi bai then you are a very big fool so basically rani of jhansi or lakshmi bai 
It was second wife of the ruler of Jhansi of Raja, uh, Jhansi Raja that is Gan Gangadhar Rao, and he protested against the doctrine of lapse and he refused to surrender. And uh, she basically fought bravely attired as a male during the revolt of 1857. She was one of the major protagonists of revolt of 1857 and she died in the battle field while she was fighting the British forces. And till today there are a lot of poems written in front in praise of her, lot of articles, lot of books written on Rani of Jhansi that is Lakshmi Bai. And her courage inspired many Indians to rise against the alien rule and she is considered one of the biggest freedom fighter of that era of India. Now another woman whom we remember in this context since we are talking about revolt of 1857, I will definitely like to name Begum Hazrat Mahal and she was the wife of the uh, deposed ruler of Lucknow who actively took part in the revolt of 1857 against the doctrine of lapse and under which Dalhousie wanted her to surrender the Lucknow. She gave huge uh, stiff resistance but after the Lucknow fall, uh, she escaped to Kathmandu. Uh, so that point is also there. Now what was the first phase? So in first phase, both the Indian men and women were leading the social reform movement since the 1880s and women's consciousness around social and national questions started growing from that time and the early phases of Indian national movement saw the demand for legal reforms and inclusion of Indians into the imperial legislative councils. So that point is there. Now during the late 19th century lot of educational reforms happened, lot of social changes. It basically produced a new variety of public which used to read and write and uh, where the women's proportion was very scanty. Basically not women were willing to read and write during that time. Education and political awareness through newspaper influenced the educated women and gradually in 19th century and early 20th century women's organization mushroomed all over the India. Now in Bengal, uh, Sarla Devi Chaudhrani, very very important uh, name, uh, she was Rabindranath Tagore's niece, she organized Bharat Sri Mahamandal in 1910, please remember this and she modified the Hindu festival of Ashtami as Birashtami so as to celebrate the victorious heroes from the past. In 1882, Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay wrote Anandamat and uh, uh, basically described the Indian revolutionaries who laid down the lives for their motherlands and his popular hymn Bande Matram became the song of the anti-colonial Indians, everybody knows about it. So keywords here are Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay, Anandamat, Bande Matram. Now in second phase uh, women's participation, there is idea of home rule and constitutionalism became dominant. Some western women played a very significant role in it, so please remember their name. Okay, uh, Annie Besant was there, she was half Irish, half English but not Indian at all. She became the first woman president of the Indian National Congress in 1917. It's a very very big achievement. Okay, uh, A theosophist and a socialist, uh, she also helped in launching the Theosophical Society in India in Adyar which is a place near Chennai. She launched the campaign for home rule based on the Irish model and her associate Margaret Cousin, an Irish suffragette, drafted the Indian Women's Voting Rights Bill and she launched the Women's Indian Association. What is suffragette means? Suffragette is a person who propagates the right that women also need to have right to vote. That is called a suffrage. That is right to vote. Sarojini Naidu emerged as a prominent nationalist around 1917. She was the second woman and the first Indian to become the president of INC in 1925, again a trivia question. And Naidu joined the Indian National Movement during the protest against the partition of Bengal which was going on in 1905. During 1915-1918, to 1918, she travelled to different regions in India delivering lectures on women's empowerment and nationalism. And she was also closely associated with the formation of Women's Indian Association and accompanied the Women's Voting Rights Delegation to London. So these are very very significant achievements of Sarojini Naidu. Now let us talk about the third phase. Uh, so sorry, uh, in this phase there was the end of World War One, and there was Jallianwala Bagh massacre of 1919. So it obviously changed the mood of the nation and it united the people. And people were doing national level movement for the first time, and they questioned that why are we not independent? Why are they talking about dominion status and stuff like that? Now in the beginning of 1919. British had passed the Royal Act against the public gathering, protest and the suspended civil liberties 
and finally in amritsar everybody knows on 13th april uh, like thousands of peaceful demonstrators were killed by general dyer and then the non cooperation movement started from 1920 to 1922 so non cooperation movement was focused on boycotting laws courts and now the women role come here that independent bodies of women such as rashtriya stri sang rashtri means national stri means women or ladies sang means association they were fused with the district congress committees non congress women basically went beyond bengal and incorporated women from all over india and it also became symbolic of hindu muslim unity and at ahmedabad b amma the mother of ali brothers addressed 6000 women to join the men in picketing very very important points you can use them in your answers and finally in andhra pradesh a vibrant durga bai collected over 1000 devdasis basically they are the temple prostitutes for the priests and uh, to hear gandhi's speech and the team collected rupees 20000 by donations in the form of jewelry and 20000 at that time was a huge huge sum now the gandhian movement started for indian freedom in the 1920s he made sure that women are included in large numbers and freedom movement had acquired a social base by the late 1920s and issues such as child marriage widow remarriage they were simultaneously being addressed by gandhi and the local reformers now a vast section of the hindu widows appealed to gandhi and these women did not require any training in satyagraha and they were the ideal freedom fighters for gandhi they were the most suitable participants uh, gandhi thought that a widow's personal renunciation could be transformed into a political ideology and he could not turn substantial widows into participants he though he upheld the idea of widowhood and used it to motivate public consciousness towards a, a constant struggle okay so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so we continue our course on condition of women in modern india and the sub part is their role in the freedom struggle of india and we'll deal with the lesson 3 here so that is pretty clear that we have to start now with the fourth phase we have already covered the three phases of how the evolution happened of women so let's talk about the fourth phase so in this political volatile phase of post 1920s a book called as mother india was published by catherine mayo so she was an american who visited india for 2 years and she had basically penned down a very very critique of hindu men and slave like condition of women within the family so obviously this is not a good portrayal and this events opened the space of the hindu family to public scrutiny and uh, obviously it still it is very very bad condition to be very frank nationalistic campaigns led by nationalists and reformers they were compelled to focus on families and making the domestic space non violent now another major development of the 1930s was the launch of the civil disobedience movement now what is civil disobedience movement here so it basically involved a 24 day long march starting along the river sabarmati and going to the sea of dandi where the gandhi ji broke the salt law the women volunteers were also there they were now being physically trained to lead marches by accords and prabhat ferries basically early morning patriotic singing so you know that women are coming in front they are taking participation women formed patriotic groups within their associations and these were called as desh sevika sangs and women courted arrests led peaceful marches of passive resistance some individual women uh, and even joined radical groups and or assisted the revolutionaries in carrying on the assassination of individual british officers so here what are the key points uh desh sevika sangs okay so this is important and even they were participation of revolutionaries and you can imagine like they were helping in killing of the british officials some of the most noted women who filled up the jails in 30s were sarojini naidu obviously muthu lakshmi reddy margaret cousins uh, kamla devi chattopadhyay you can take these names in the freedom fighting struggle and in the event of men's arrest the women's association took on the task of carrying on civil disobedience and organizing meeting in behalf and in addition to this they also carried on with the gandhian constructive program of spinning cloth offering passive resistance by way of fasting now there are several accounts and men memoirs of women which relate to 1930s and some of them were called as the sevikas or scouts for instance uh, in 1930s the congress in lucknow had been declared illegal by the government so you can understand how bad it is 
सो इन हर मेमोर शिवरानी देवी हु इज़ द फेमस हिंदी नॉवलिस्ट प्रेमचंद वाइफ राइट्स दैट एज वुमेन सेट इन साइड द पुलिस लॉरी दे हेल्ड महात्मा गांधी एंड भारत माता की जय सो अगेन लाइक ग्रेट थिंग्स अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट पेट्रियोटिक बॉडी एच एस आर ए हिंदुस्तान सोशलिस्ट रिपब्लिकन एसोसिएशन सौ कंट्रीब्यूशन बाय दुर्गावती देवी इन नाइनटीन हंड्रेड सेवन एंड शी लिव अपू नाइनटीन हंड्रेड नाइन्टी नाइन शी एंड हर हजबेंड भगवती चरण वोरा दे वर दी मेंबर्स ऑफ एच एस आर ए शी इवन अकम्पनीड भगत सिंह ऑन दी ट्रेन जर्नी इन विच ही मेड इज एस्केप इन डिस्गाइज आफ्टर किलिंग दी सॉन्डर्स ओके बिकॉज ऑफ द अपोजिशन ऑफ लाला लाजपत लाइ बींग किल्ड ड्यूरिंग साइमन कमीशन इशू when they were opposing simon commission because they were all white so another instance of revolutionary participation comes from the chittagong armory raid case of 1930s so you should know where is chittagong chittagong is in present day bangladesh uh, kalpana dat 1913 to 1995 she joined the indian republican army chatagram branch and which was the armed resistance group led by surya sen and she joined preeti lata wadekar in attacking the european club in chittagong In 1930s, there is another name which we often encounter, and her name is Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay. She emerged as the major leader of the Gandhian movement, particularly the Salt Satyagraha. And even in independent India, she became increasingly interested in promoting Indian handicrafts, handlooms, and theatre. And government of India even gave her Padma Bhushan in 1987. Now let us talk about contribution of some very very prominent uh, women freedom fighters, and we will do it very very. specifically so do you know exactly what to be learned so contribution of madam bikaji gama so basically she was influenced by dada bhai nehru ji she was a source of inspiration for indian youth in the uk uh, she unfurled the first national flag at the international socialist conference in stuttgart germany in 1907 she organized free india society she began the general bande matram to spread her revolutionary thought Uh, she traveled a lot spoke to people about indians struggling for independence and she could aptly be called as mother india's first cultural representative of usa now contribution of sarojini naidu she presided over the east african indian congress in south africa in the year 1929 she was the first indian women to be the president of inc or the second woman to be president of inc after any patient she was awarded the kaiser hind medal by the british government for her work during the pre epidemic in india In 1930, during the Salt Satyagraha, she was one of the women protesters at the Dharsana Salt Works, Gujarat. In 1931, she participated even in the Round Table Conference uh, with the Mahatma Gandhi and Madan Mohan Malviya. And again, in 1942, she was arrested during the Quit India Movement. So she played quite a significant role. Now let us talk about contribution of Aruna Asaf Ali. So she became an active member of the Congress Party after marrying Asaf Ali. and she participated in public processions during salt satyagraha so you can see like mahatma gandhi used to involve a lot of women in their in his campaign and that was a very good thing she was arrested on the charge that she was a vagrant and hence not released in 1931 under the gandhi irwin pact which stipulated releases of all the political prisoners but she was not released now in 1932 she was held at the tihar jail which is in delhi where she protested against the indifferent treatment of political prisoners he by launching a hunger strike and her efforts led to the improvement of conditions of prisoners in the tihar jail now this is the important point please remember she is widely remembered for hosting the indian national congress flag at the govalia tank maidan in bombay during the quit india movement of 1942 so the key word is govalia tank maidan bombay quit india movement 1942 aruna asaf ali she was appointed delhi's first mayor in 1958 and posthumously she was decorated with india's highest civil and award the bharat ratna in 1997 now let us also talk about raini garden liu she was representative of northeast she was a prominent naga nationalistic woman leader from manipur who took over the movement of naga nationalist against the british and her movement was active during the civil disobedience movement to oust the foreigners from manipur she was also called as rani of the nagas and uh, by jawaharlal nehru for her influence and work for the nagas so people from northeast women were also participating sucheta kriplani was an ardent nationalist with socialistic orientation she was a very close associate of jay prakash narayan who actively participated in quit india, quit india movement and was also active in uh, 1970s rajkumari amritkaur was the first health minister of india 
and aims opd is named after her if you don't know it rajkumari amrit kaur opd r opd in our college she was a close follower of gandhi ji from 1999 onwards 1919 onwards she actively participated in salt satyagraha quit india movement she became the first health minister in post independent india and she was the founder of president of indian council of child welfare and founder member of all india women's conference now usha mehta is remembered for broadcasting the congress radio and also called as the secret uh, congress radio and underground radio station which was functioned for few months during the quit india movement of 1942 so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so we are discussing the condition of women in modern india and their role in the freedom struggle as well so let us discuss about some government initiatives which has helped to improve their position so first of all we'll talk about UN, a un millennium project task force on education and gender equality so basically it says that if you want to empower women in reality you should have start with giving equal capabilities education and health status resources and opportunity so first of all the most important thing is assume that human beings are machine so if they are machine they'll they'll need to have their oil and uh, they'll need to have their parts checked regularly so basically health wise and they need to have knowledge about the environment so that is education so you need to have education and health properly now they need to have equal capabilities also and finally they need to have resources and opportunities if these five things are missing then nothing can happen now when you talk about millennium development goals for gender equality so they are developed to ensure equity and peace around the world and these now have been replaced by sustainable development goals and uh, just remember these measures it will help you in writing any women empowerment answer so strengthening opportunities for post primary education for girls investing in improved infrastructure to reduce women's burdens availability of loans and financial assistance for income generation uh, guaranteeing property and inheritance right to women increasing women's representation in national and local government bodies Uh, providing basic health care to women uh, provision of combating violence against women and girls so what is ministry of women and child development doing so it was not established at the time of independence but uh, it was establishment as a department of the hrd ministry in the year 1985 to drive the holistic development of women and children and just 10 years ago it was separated as a ministry so department was separated and given the status of ministry just 10 years ago with the powers to formulate plans policies and programs for wcd wcd basically means women and child development and initiatives like icds it's a very good initiative uh, for the promotion of health of women and children and it is a package of services such as supplementary nutrition health checkups immunization etc now empowerment of women begins with their safety and health and the ministry is committed to providing them then you have swam siddh program so it is an integrated scheme for empowerment of women it is implemented by ministry of wcd crux is basically women's self help group establishment so they will help in the empowering women so that they can have access to all kind of resources which they are denied then you have national commission for women ncw so it was launched by government on international women day just 7 years ago so people think that they are existing forever but as you can see ministry just came 10 years ago and this just came 7 years ago with the aim to strengthen the overall processes that promote all round development of women its mandate kya hai mandate is to strengthen the intersector convergence facilitate the process of coordinating all the women's welfare social economic development programs across the ministries and departments and it has a mission that aims to provide a single window service now what do you mean by single window service that if you want to get a passport then you come here if you want to get a pan card you come here basically all the types of schemes i'm just giving an example so all the types of schemes which benefit women in any way so they have a single window service to that under the aegis of various central ministries in light with its mandate the mission has been named as mission poorna shakti implying a vision for holistic empowerment of women now national resource center for women has been set up which functions as a national convergence center for all schemes and programs for women and it acts as a central repository of knowledge information research and data on all the gender related issue and it is the main body which serves the national and state mission authority now let us talk about rajiv gandhi scheme for empowerment of adolescent girls or sabla so it is a centrally sponsored scheme and uh, it is a basically all round development of adolescent girl launched in 2010 in 200 districts it will make the girls self reliant and talk about health nutrition hygiene nutrition 
एडोलसेंट रिप्रोडक्टिव एंड सेक्शुअल हेल्थ अर्श इट इज कॉल्ड एज ओके एंड फैमिली एंड चाइल्ड केयर फैसिलिटेटिंग एक्सेस टू पब्लिक सर्विसेज थ्रू वेरियस इंटरवेंशन इट ऑल्सो एम्स टू टूवर्ड्स मेन स्ट्रीमिंग आउट ऑफ स्कूल एडोलसेंट गर्ल्स इन टू फॉर्मल एंड नॉन फॉर्मल एजुकेशन नियरली वन हंड्रेड लैक्स एडोलसेंट गर्ल्स पर एन एम आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू बी बेनिफिट अंडर दिस स्कीम दैट इज वन करोड़ now there is a step scheme step is to su- uh, support to train and empower employer program for women so basically they upgrade their skills here and uh, it is for self and wage employment and the target group here includes marginalized asset less rural women and urban poor now special focus is also given on focal districts in which women are particularly disadvantaged funds are directly released to different ngos and not to the state government now social empowerment and education it involves elementary education secondary education uh, vocationalization of secondary education basically means training related to employable skills adult education higher and technical education nutrition education and extension sarv shiksha abhiyan and these are to provide educational facilities for women now do you have health and nutrition for example icds rch phase 2 national rural health mission janni suraksha yojana integrated child protection scheme food security mission national iodine deficiency disorder control program so all these indirectly will also bolster the women empowerment now you have indira gandhi matritva sahyog yojana it is basically a cct scheme conditional cash transfer scheme that will target the pregnant and lactating women who are either 19 years of age or older and have two children goal is basically to partly to compensate for wage loss during the childbirth and child care and to provide conditions for safe delivery and good nutrition and feeding practices now you also have kishori shakti yojana it is to improve the nutritional health and developmental status of adolescent girls and uh, promote about awareness about health hygiene nutrition family care and link them to opportunities for learning life skills going back to school help them gain a better understanding of social environment and take initiatives to become productive members of the society now Uh, you have sudhar scheme it is to provide supportive institutional framework for women victim of uh, difficult circumstances so she could live her life with dignity and conviction basic shelter food clothing health etc will be provided and special needs will also be taken care of uh, if they were like uh, which like under no circumstances they will be left unattended then you have ujjwala scheme it is for preventing the trafficking of women and children for commercial sexual exploitation through mobile mo- social mobilization involvement of local communities etc okay and then you have lot of legislation like immoral traffic prevention act of 1956 and uh, dowry prohibition act of 1961 so it abolishes the dowry system it discourages the taking or giving of dowry then you have indecent representation of women prohibition act of 1986 so basically they should not be represented indecently through ads or publications writings paintings figures etc then you have protection of women from domestic violence act of 2005 so it is uh, to protect women from uh, getting like uh, physically mentally abused in their own household then you have sexual harassment of women at workplace 2013 act so it is to prevent and protect women against the sexual harassment of women at workplace and also for the prevention and redressal of complaints of sexual harassment and it is basically a fundamental right under article 14 15 article 21 and right to even practice any profession or to carry any occupation which includes right to a safe environment free from sexual harassment now you also have pnpcdt prenatal diagnostic techniques act of 1994 it is basically you cannot determine the sex of the baby under any circumstances otherwise it leads to female feticide or female um, basically death within the womb then you have criminal law amendment bill 2013 it happened after the justice varma committee after the nirbhaya case and uh, it has a lot of laws on acid attack act with intent to dis, dis- uh, like uh, disrobe a woman voyeurism okay stalking sexual harassment into the ipc and there is very stringent punishment associated with them then you have women's reservation bill which is the 108th amendment bill so it proposes the amend to constitution of india to reserve one third seats of in the lok sabha and all the legislative assembly for women but unfortunately it is not working out then you have national vision for empowerment of women so it was launched in 2010 it aims to strengthen overall processes that promote all round development of women and it has been named as mission poon shakti implying a vision for holistic empowerment of women 
ओके देन यू हैव की स्ट्रैटेजीज अडॉप्टेड बाय नेशनल मिशन फॉर एम्पावरमेंट ऑफ वुमेन इट इंक्लूड्स पॉवर्टी एलिवेशन एंड इकोनॉमिक एम्पावरमेंट ऑफ वुमेन लाइक इन्वेस्टमेंट इन स्किल एंड ऑन्टरप्रिनरशिप डेवलपमेंट माइक्रो क्रेडिट वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग एंड सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप डेवलपमेंट फॉर इकोनॉमिक एम्पावरमेंट ऑफ वुमेन एंड फाइनली यू हैव सोशल एम्पावरमेंट एंड एजुकेशन लाइक प्रिवेंशन ऑफ चाइल्ड मैरिज प्रोवाइडिंग राइट टू एजुकेशन देन यू हैव हेल्थ एंड न्यूट्रिशन प्रोवाइडिंग सेफ ड्रिंकिंग वाटर इंप्रूविंग चाइल्ड सेक्स रेशियो एम्पावरमेंट ऑफ वलनरेबल एंड मार्जिनलाइज ग्रुप्स एंड फाइनली सपोर्ट टू पी आर आई इंस्टीट्यूशन दट इज पंचायती राज इंस्टीट्यूशन वुमेन्स मूवमेंट्स एंड कम्युनिटी रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फॉर स्ट्रेंथनिंग ऑफ लोकल बॉडीज सो दीज आर मोस्ट ऑफ दी स्कीम्स विच गवर्नमेंट एज इनिशिएटेड एंड ऑब्वियसली देर आर अदर्स लाइक बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ विच आई हैव कवर्ड इन द नेक्स्ट लेसन बट बाई एंड लार्ज दीज आर दी स्कीम्स विच गवर्नमेंट एज इनिशिएटेड सो थैंक यू वॉचिंग दिस लेसन Hey guys what's up so this is the lesson 5th uh, in condition of women in modern india their role in freedom struggle and uh, so this is the last lesson in this course so we will talk about women empowerment in this course how can women empowerment happen and what does it involve what are the definition of women empowerment how we will go about women empowerment what is government doing to do women empowerment and so on and so forth so everything will be covered in this lesson so women empowerment basically it will involve that you change the patriarchal mindset completely so that is the first and foremost point give women control over resources natural human intelligent intellectual financial inner resources like control over our own body bringing women into decision making roles like parliament at household levels also uh, women's struggles and movements to be closely linked to peace movements ecology movements workers and peasants movements human rights movements etc uh they need to participate in gainful economic activity and encouraging men to share mothering caring nurturing activities uh to provide time for women to rest to have time for themselves to develop other interest hobbies etc so women participation right from the unit of family to international level is necessary with effective decision making power for better women empowerment so here one is the primary level Uh, so when we talk about education every girl must be provided education so that she can take self decision independently in future because without education no women empowerment can happen so if anybody says that if you give them money if you give them that absolute stupidity without health and education you can't do anything and if the person is educated they can find their health because they know the importance of health of uh, eating right and what is anemia and what is iron folic acid uh so education is the first and the foremost important thing especially the primary education and in family level you have to put the discrimination away right from the famical uh, family level because a girl child has to be given equal importance in taking views in any matter and you can't just promote your boy child at any cost but unfortunately these are all in paper you know the reality you go to any village in haryana rajasthan they crave for boy like anything but it will take some time it will start with us and both these will help to empower women to be strong and inclusive in the level of society now uh, family matters a woman must uh, be given freedom in a family to participate in all the family decisions actively they should be asked if their boys are getting married what should they buy where should the land be bought what business to do everything should be uh, they should participate political field in a democratic country like india government must have to take strong initiatives to women engage in political activities right from the sarpanch to the parliamentarian level now in civil society uh, women participation in civil society is very much necessary and they should be encouraged to come forward for the causes of any social injustice through the ngos or women commission or ncw whatever for any organization at government level education has to, at basic level is necessary regardless of sex and apart from these government from clerk to secretary meritorious women should be given preference government should encourage more women to enter into the workforce and other fields like government should take appropriate measures to select the caliber of girls whether it is in sport drama and then throughout proper now some other suggestions includes like schemes for encouraging entrepreneurship skills should be introduced bharatiya mahila bank is a very welcoming step by the government now poor literacy rate high mortality rate numerous instances of discrimination in workplace are faced by women there are a lot of acts which they have made like domestic violence act uh, prevention of sexual harassment of women at workplace act sharda act compulsory registration of marriage act along with let's say declining of triple talaq 
and provisions for a uniform civil code they are trying to push a lot for women empowerment so you can use these keywords women led self help groups and cooperatives like seva should also be promoted uh, strict implementation of justice orma committee do you know who is justice orma so god rest his soul so he was there in the nirbhaya case and uh, he gave a lot of recommendation as to how to prevent such case in future uh, to prevent violence against women if we implement his committee then it is great then the, we have to change the attitudes of the males as well as females towards women roles in society and this can be done through awareness campaigns providing examples etc uh, we also have to give proper awareness for law should be there uh, that there is law and it should not be restricted to papers only but the implementation of law should be there so that every women can be familiar with their rights uh, significant steps has to be taken to implement all the laws which are amended to facilitate detention prevention and punishment of crimes against women now when it comes to education it has to women education has to be made compulsory uh, women should be encouraged to become literate because if they are not educated they cannot have access to their rights see without education nothing can happen you have to go to court you have to fight for your rights you have people should know you are educated half of the problem are solved then and there if you are educated you will know that health is important so you will fight for that as well so education which will help women not only to read and understand the word but also like read understand control our world i am talking about like high level education at least class 12th tak ki education to you should give and you should also promote for college education and beyond now literacy classes for women should also help women for form strong groups so they can gain more and more control over their lives help break silence make young boys and girls gender sensitive create positive social norms that value the girls and their rights for example gender champions initiatives in colleges across the country by ugc now encouraging financial support for women for tertiary education where their presence is very very low now universalization and strengthening of icds scheme so health is very very important so under this village health and nutrition days are conducted in rural areas as an outreach activity for provisions of maternal and child health services promotion of institutional deliveries through the janani suraksha yojana and then you have financial security like flagship programs like narega etc will help create rural assets and it will also provide livelihood security to rural women that at least bare minimum amount of money they will get uh, try to promote women entrepreneurship self help groups like mahila e heart again very very important terms that has been launched as a initiative by rashtriya mahila kosh for meeting the aspirations and needs of women entrepreneurs then promoting skills and employability of women in the sectors which employ a large number of women like under the national skill development policy of government of india then uh, try to give women reservation in parliament state legislative assembly but there is no political will only 8 to 10% women are represented in parliament it is even worse than pakistan let me not get started there and just pakistan's representation in parliament is there matlab basically the highest legislative body is higher than india and representation of women's interest in effective lobbies interest groups is also needed now societal values and norms which emphasize on greater importance of autonomy autonomy for women for example self selection of spouses they should be able to select their spouse now systems providing easy access to reproductive health services if they want to abort their baby they should be able to do it if they want to have contraceptive pills they should be able to get it now affirmative media representation for women highlighting their uh, roles and contribution for the nation for example recently miss world miss manushi chiller was widely appreciated for highlighting the role of mother as a toughest job in the world uh, women's sensitivity and collective awareness about gender based injustice and discrimination now when it comes to safety and security you have to like give more harsher punishment as has been criminal law amendment act of 2013 it's more about execution that is more important then you have posh act like sexual harassment of women at workplace then you have maternity benefit relief which gives them maternity relief from 12 to 26 weeks then uh, ensure women safety pertaining to the strategic areas of prevention protection and rehabilitation okay secure a bright future and welfare of the girl child beti bachao beti padhao initiative increase the visibility of the women in police force for example 33% reservation has been made for women in the police force in uts and some states increasing emphasis on gender sensitivity of police force through training programs and a community outreach initiative by police example mahila police volunteers 
strict implementation of the schemes is needed and awareness camps for women should be organized so that they can become familiar with the framed schemes mandatory appointment of females in decision making process institutions like board of companies departmental boards policy making boards um, municipalities mlas mps providing concession and monetary benefits that is also important to promote organization which have more female participation like ssgs etc buying property in women's name improving the economic status of women uh, government has given them equal rights in parental property especially in hinduism and this type of economic empowerment will help in better society now united nations effort like united nation women decade beijing declaration all these are important so thank you for watching this